it's Sunday and that means it's race time here in Spa. As the cars are being prepared, let's join them trackside for the start of the Belgian Grand Prix. Now, Anthony Davidson, I wonder, might we be in for some early pit stops today for the midfield teams, all trying to put some pressure on or disrupting things for the leaders up front? If you're in the middle of the pack, you know, you've got your own race to run, I don't think they're going to be thinking about causing trouble up front. However, closer to the head of the pack, don't be surprised to see some split strategies. If you're running second and third, for example, bringing one car in for an undercut while leaving the other one out there longer can put a lot of pressure on the leader and maybe force them into an error. Welcome back to F1 2020 here on the channel. As ever, FIFA content on the way today as well. Don't worry, this is an extra upload. This is my second race that I'm showing you. The first with the wheel. We previously, with the opening video I used, uh, the wheel on F1 2020. That was just doing some time trial laps to give you a taster of uh, what F1 20 was like. And this is going to be our first opportunity to try a 25% race distance Grand Prix. The last one we did with a controller was just five laps at Silverstone with Lewis Hamilton. You can find that on the channel page if you missed it. But here, using Alex Albon at Spa, as you can tell, just as Alex did in real life last season, starting at the back of the grid in Belgium, he was able to make real progression through the field throughout the course of that Grand Prix and finish uh, well inside the points, fifth or sixth, I think, if memory serves correctly. We're aiming to try and replicate that if we can, but of course, at only 25% race distance, we don't have the full opportunity to claw back the places that Alex did. But as of yet, I haven't tried a 100% race distance Grand Prix with my wheel. Uh, still not sure how my body's gonna react to 100% race distance with this wheel. It's very physical, of course, driving a car in anger, but we will be doing 100% race distance career mode on Twitch when the game officially launches on the 10th of July. It's out on the 7th, I believe, with the Schumacher edition where you get all of the extra DLC. But hopefully I'll be able to stream some of this work in progress build. And it is still a work in progress build. Key to point that out. Uh, within the next couple of weeks prior to that official launch. That is the plan. That's the aim. That's the hope. So do follow me on Twitch in the link down below and uh, join me for some F1 2020 streams when they arrive. Now, this is the first time I've done a 25% race distance on the game altogether. It's the first time I've done a race against the AI with my wheel. So you will see mistakes from me in this race. It's not the perfect Grand Prix by any stretch of the imagination. I'm still getting used to the wheel, and this is the longest I've done in one sitting. So I'm racing on 80% difficulty. Lovely move up the inside of the uh, racing point of Sergio Perez, though. A bit of a dive bomb, but we managed to make it work and get better traction on the way out the final corner to get us up into 14th by the end of lap one. That's a hell of an opening lap to take six places. Get a little bit stuck behind uh, Pierre Gasly, though, here on lap two. I've called him up, but we're trying to find a way past, and there's just there's just no gap. He's not leaving me any space to try and get the, the uh, car up the inside. You can tell from the rearview mirror up top that I've still got the racing point uh, crawling all over my uh, back bottom, and he's going to close up on me here, of course, with uh, Red Bull using the Honda engine and racing point with the Mercedes. It has a higher top speed. It is a more powerful engine, and you can see him closing up on me. Goes one way, dummies, and goes the other. That's very good uh, AI behavior. Not seen the, the AI dummy me like that before in any F1 game, so that bodes well for uh, longer distance races and just in general for racing the AI in a, a more realistic manner. As you can see here, we're out now actually up to lap five, and I haven't yet been able to find my way past Pierre Gasly, but don't worry, we are going to make significant progress up the field uh, in this Grand Prix, and we aren't going to get stuck behind the Alpha Tauri for long. I'm going to try and get a better exit here out of the uh, turn and up onto the straight, well, straight, I say straight, the run, basically, up until the final chicane. Uh, it's a bent straight, but we're right in the slipstream here, moving out to the left-hand side and making the move stick. Very pleased with that, of course, Alpha Tauri and uh, Red Bull both using the Honda engine as they're both part of the uh, Red Bull family. Alpha Tauri, of course, used to be uh, Red Bull Toro Rosso and now a rebrand to Alpha Tauri. And I actually, I like the name and I love the uh, livery as well. But you may have noticed there that a number of uh, drivers are now into the pits. We're actually up to P7 now. Now I've decided to run a different strategy to the majority of the rest of the field. Most of the drivers started on the red soft tyre and are moving to the yellow striped medium tyre. So initially, in the opening part of the Grand Prix, they were going to be quicker than me. However, 
We started on the yellow striped medium tyre and we'll be switching to the red soft tyre here as we pull into the pits now. As I was trying to close down the car in front of me and just couldn't quite seem to close the gap to make that one final move before we pull into the pits. But are we now switching from the yellow striped medium tyre to the quicker red striped soft tyre? So hopefully we can make some better progress now that we've gotten ourselves onto the, uh, the quicker compound. Obviously, as you saw, we were able to quite rapidly make our way up to 14th and then as my tyres started to uh, to go off and obviously as the AI were quite quick on their on their red soft tyres they were able to to keep the distance from me we came out of the pits and still had pressure from an Alpha Tauri from behind on this occasion but we hold the challenge off and are able to stick in the position that we came out of the pits in but he's all over the back of me trying to chase down the McLaren in front who's actually being held up quite severely by Nicholas Latifi uh, in the Williams, we're trying to uh, get ourselves into the points if we possibly can before the end of this Grand Prix, now that we're on the uh, the faster tyre. And I've got Carlos Sainz in front of me. We're still P14 after that stop. Thought about having a look into Puon, but it's probably not the best of places to go for an overtake, to be honest. So we back out of it. He's off the accelerator. We'll try and pick our way past. Sainz is still trying to find his way past Latifi as well, and he's really getting held up here. We've got a bit of a train forming now with the Alpha Tauri of Gasly behind me. The McLaren in front and then the Williams there. But how is this for a double overtake? Excuse me, Nicholas. I'm coming through. Thank you very much. Two cars taken in one move and we're up to P12. Time to chase after Lance Stroll in the racing point. Now, Gasly was able to also do a double move and get past the two in front of him. The McLaren and the Williams of Latifi, who's now pulled into the pits there, as you can see, and disappeared. But... He wasn't able to get past me. We were able to hold him off. And then the charge begins to chase down the racing point of Lance Stroll. Now, you may notice in a moment, currently, it's Kimi Raikkonen that's in ninth place. I'm getting attacked here by Giovinazzi, who went into the pits. And we were able to overtake him on the way out. He basically came out of the pits right beside me. We uh, were just in front of him, heading through Eau Rouge and Radion as he backed out of it. Then he came back at me down the Kemmel Strait, but we were able to uh, to hold the position. And now, as we've held off that attack from Giovinazzi, who's actually now dropped behind Pierre Gasly, so you can see top left. And now Carlos Sainz, literally, as I'm talking about it. You can see at the top of that little graphic, Lewis Hamilton is in ninth position. I don't know whether he's got some aero damage. I believe so, because you can see how much we were able to close up on he and Lance Stroll through that slow right-hander. He's dropped well down the order, Lewis, and is really struggling through the turns. Lance Stroll, who's obviously got a Mercedes engine in his racing point, is able to crawl up all over the, to the uh, rear wing of Lewis Hamilton. And we're doing the same to the both of them. Now, we're in 11th currently, so the pink racing point in front of us indicates 10th place and a point. But with Lewis there, and you can see on the minimap in the bottom left, a number of other cars in front of him, another Alfa, uh, so yeah, Alfa Romeo, and then the McLaren Lando Norris in front of uh, Kimi Raikkonen, who's now taken Lewis Hamilton and is up to eighth. There is the opportunity in the final, well, lap and a bit now, to try and get ourselves into the points at the end of this Belgian Grand Prix. It's going to take a lot of effort, but I'm hoping that Lewis's poor aero right now and the damage to his car is going to back he and Lance Stroll up into me. We'll be able to make a couple of changes now heavy bit of oversteer on the way out of the final turn there but we just were able to get the DRS you can see the live indicator of the gap between the uh, cars both in front and behind in the top left as well and well we're less than a second behind Lance Stroll now we started to get a bit of a run on him uh, down the hill and then that Mercedes power kicked in but as you can see we are going to be able to get into the DRS range, or stay in the DRS range, sorry, at least over the detection point, and be able to activate that DRS down the Kemmel straight. He is still pulling away, but as we approach the chicane, you can see he goes for a potential move on Lewis Hamilton, who goes defensive, and that slows them both up. Now, we are on the final lap here of the Grand Prix, but now we've two cars right in front of us, and we have the opportunity to score some World Championship points. Try and go around the outside of the racing point here, hang it out wide, get it done and then we have the inside line and actually the clear track for the corner with no name moving left towards Puan now and now we can get all over Lewis Hamilton who also is on the yellow striped medium tyre so he's going to be slower on that than we are on our red softs you can see just how much we're closing up on Lewis here as we went through the long left-hand report he just does not have 
the aero grip. I don't know whether he's got damage. I imagine so. They hadn't said anything over the radio to let me know that he'd had any sort of um, mechanical issue, whether there was an issue with his engine and he was running slightly slower, I'm not sure. But ordinarily, as we've even seen in this, um, in this video so far, Mercedes-powered cars have been able to pull away from me. But I'm right in Lewis's slipstream here and he's not pulling away from me. This is the final chicane on the final turn. I just throw it up the outside to have the inside line for the second part of the chicane. He's neck and neck with me right here. It's all about who's going to get the better exit. It's Brazil all over again. And as we edge over the line, I was not sure whether I was able to make it stick. But there we go. Confirmation of ninth place celebration in the little mini cam. A fist bump. Driver of the day by about an inch. Yes, Chez. Not very much between Lewis and I at all. But we hold off Lewis Hamilton to the line just as Pierre Gasly did in his Toro Rosso last year at Interlagos. And we pip Lewis Hamilton to ninth place. So two points is what we would have gotten from that in the World Championship. A nice recovery drive in just a 25% race from uh, 20th to 9th. Very pleased with that team at Mardik there, as you can see. In the, uh, in the Ferrari Gary celebrating Charles Leclerc's win, I believe uh, Sebastian Vettel finished second in that race. Lewis just 10th. He must have had damage, I'm sure of it. But let me know in the comment section down below which car and track or which driver and track you would like to see me race at next. As soon as I'm able to stream this build or the updated build once we get it, I will be sure to let you guys know and uh, show you more in depth and more long-term and longer form content we're limited to about 15 minutes for uploads at the minute with this build but that hopefully will change sooner rather than later but i've very much enjoyed that 25 percent race with the wheel and i'm definitely going to be looking to do some more of that uh, over the next few days so if you enjoyed this one let me know which track and driver you'd like me to race at next i'll do another 25 percent race with the wheel for that and hopefully you'll enjoy that as well. You can see here from my fastest lap that actually we were on the pace of those at the front. So perhaps I might be able to up the difficulty slightly when I'm racing at 100% race distance because I'll have the opportunity to uh, claw back any positions that I lose in qualifying. I've basically been starting at the back here to try and show you guys as many overtaking opportunities as possible rather than you <laughs> see me just run around in ninth place on my own for uh, 10 laps. But that's all for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll start that again. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for uh, FIFA content, the occasional F1 video as you've been seeing here, and of course follow me on Twitch as well for all of the F1 content coming your way. But for now... I shall see you next time.